All right, so I just finished training back and I thought what I would do as an educational video is shoot my four favorite rows. And it's specifically, we're gonna do single arm today because as you all know, back is one of my weak body parts and the way I found to feel it the most is to isolate one side at a time. So single arm rowing has been the most beneficial for me in terms of my progress and my ability to have a mind muscle connection to the absolute best for my back. So what I wanna do, I wanna start with two mountain dog staples. It's gonna be a one arm barbell row to start. So with this exercise, all you're gonna do is put a bar in the corner and a landmine and then use quarters so you can get a big range of motion. So not plates, not 35s, but 25s. And it's gonna be able to give you more range of motion. And if you watch me do this, it's gonna be a great exercise to really be able to drill my lats. So let me show you a few. All right, with that form, if you notice my body is angled towards the bar. I'm not straight ahead rowing this way. I'm angled because that just feels best for my body. And it, that took some practice and like tinkering around with where I angled my feet, how close I put my feet to the bar. And then also you'll notice that I grab my hand all the way up to the bar's collar. So all the way up. And then what I wanna think about is keeping my elbow tucked, not flared and driving towards my hip. Not with my arm pulling high, but driving towards my hip. And again, for my left arm, I'm gonna to step to the other side of the bar and I'll show you some reps here too. Again, notice I set up my body to where I'm angled. I'm gonna grab all the way towards the collar, brace my non-working arm on my knee for stabilization, stretch that lat, drill right there. Hammers the lat. You wanna tell them I'm taking my elbow towards my hip. And that's the one arm barbell row. Exercise number two, the Meadows row. So what I'm gonna recommend here, step one, grab a wrist strap. The reason we're gonna do that is the end of this bar is super thick, it's hard to hold on to when it rolls. So you're gonna need a wrist strap for these, in my opinion. My hands are small, so maybe that's why. But grab a wrist strap. So this exercise, instead of really focusing on the lat, this is gonna get more of our upper back, even our rear delt and trap some. So we're gonna think about driving our elbow high and getting that shoulder blade around towards your spine. So let me show you what a couple of those reps look like. Again, strap in. Staggered stance, and then all I want to do is draw my elbow up and out, here, there, just like that. Don't cheat that stretch, here. So again, that's the right side. And what I wanna think about, the great thing about these one-arm rows is I get almost double sets. So it will take my volume up a little bit if you look at the sets as one, two there as opposed to just counting that to one. But what I wanna think about with that specifically with the Meadows row is driving my elbow up, not trying to tuck it like I would be on the one-arm barbell row. So let me show you the other side. Again, switch the strap. All I'm doing is I'm strapping right to the end of the bar. Again, my feet are angled, they're not straight. They're angled, and then I'm just gonna think about driving my elbow up and out. And again, I can go straight arm palm or elbow on the, uh, or forearm on the knee. Here, drive up. Meadows row. If you lack that thickness through your upper back, do this exercise first, do it hard, and do it as heavy as you can. Try to think about progression. All of these rows I'm gonna show you today, try to be progressive with them. Get strong at them once you've nailed the mind-muscle connection. Let's go over to the dumbbell rack. Next up, one of my bread and butters, the one-arm dumbbell row. The reason I like this is there's a lot of variations. We can do these, we can do them off the rack, we can do them dead stop, we can do them off a bench. The great thing about this is when I drive back and up, I can squeeze my elbow towards my spine and get a ton of back work. Plus, the great thing about this exercise is you can really progress up and get super heavy with it with good range of motion and good reps. So not only does this stretch my lat out really, really good, but it also gives me a great contraction. So let me show you a couple of these reps and then some things of do's and don'ts with dumbbell rows. So off the rack, that's what it'll look like. Brace myself on the rack, grab the dumbbell up towards my front foot, pull towards my hip. Good stretch, right to my hip. All 
All right, so if you notice with that exercise, what I'm not doing, let me show you what not to do here. And I see this all the time. Here, guess what's working? Bicep, and something else. A lot of shrugs and then pull. So they shrug and then pull. All that tension's going to my trap. I wanna work the lat, so I need to get it back. So think about angles and elbows. Again, here, drop up, squeeze that lat, get it short. Okay, so that's off of the rack. Let's say you wanna do these more explosive, but you also wanna remove inertia or momentum with the exercise. We can do these dead stop. So what does a dead stop dumbbell row look like? Here off the ground, every rep, drop up, squeeze, pause, drop up, squeeze, pause. Now, it's really easy when that dumbbell is on the ground to just chill and let that lat lose tension. But I wanna keep that isometrically flexed while I'm getting that stretch. So don't let tension off that lat because then when you start the pull, it's gonna either begin with your rear delt, your trap, or your bicep. Keep tension on that lat so when it's time to pull and it, it really fire all those fast twist muscle fibers, my lat is gonna be the first and the most readily worked. So let me show you a couple more of those so you can see what I'm talking about. Lat tense, fire, bam. Tense, fire. Do not let off at the bottom. Just like that. Dumbbell row. If you have a struggling back, pr I promise you, work on this form, work on this technique, both these exercises I just taught you here in one, uh, in one spot, and just try to get better and stronger right now. If you're not feeling in your back, what muscles are you feeling in? And then just start to uh, kind of take a video of yourself and then look at it. If you see your biceps and rear delts working, you know what's up. You gotta start driving with that elbow. So, dumbbell row. Let's show you machine row, that's one of my favorites. My absolute favorite machine row, the DY hammer strength, this absolutely drills my lats. The range of motion is gonna look really, really short, but it allows me to get my lat fully contracted, specifically my low lat. Uh, so, I'm gonna take a semi supinated grip, so it's gonna be slightly underhand, and then I'm gonna stand tall on this piece and think about driving my elbow back and then around my body in towards my spine. And then when I'm letting it out, I wanna think about driving my elbow towards the ground, almost scraping my elbow on the ground. So not letting my shoulder ride high to get my trap, keep my shoulder down and decompressed, and then think about rowing back towards my hip. Let me show you a couple of these reps. All right, so I'm gonna brace myself on this chest pad, staggered stance, and then all I'm gonna do is drive back, squeeze, one, two, and then let it out, down. Squeeze, one, two, down. Just like that. Again, I'm not going here. My shoulder is staying down, squeeze it all out, make it work. With this exercise, the form is imperative. If you notice, I'm not shifting my shoulders and back, working my erectors. I'm only trying to get the lower portion of my lat to work to stretch and then fully shorten. All right, bonus exercise here. This is one I just recently learned from John Meadows. This is a single arm cable row with a chest support. Uh, if you really struggle activating your lats, making them work, feeling them work, add this in at the start or the end of your back day. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna attach a D handle. You can use a most grip. You can use one of the prime rotate handles. Make it low on the cable. Grab your bench on a high incline. I'm gonna brace my knee and my arm on this bench. And then I wanna think about driving my elbow low and really work on my lower lats. So let me show you a couple. Grab the handle. Kneel on the bench here. Stretch that lat. Drive, squeeze. Just like that. If you don't have a DY row, for example, you can do this semi supinated. So, right there, drill that underhand grip. The freedom of this cable is that I can kind of do whatever I want. I can shoot, I can even take a pertinent grip and get more of an upper back row if I wanted to. But today, I want to do specifically for lats. So, here, drive low, squeeze. Squeeze that lap.
Okay, those are my five go-to lat exercises of when it comes to rowing. All day long, I could survive off of those five exercises and that is it. That's how much I love and really can feel those exercises. I have a great mind-muscle connection with them. They really work my back. And one of the things you'll notice if you watch back and rewatch this video is I lock my body in stone. There's not a lot of forward to back bending. There's not a lot of turning and twisting of my trunk, but that's gonna engage my asthma, my obliques, my low back. I lock my body in stone and then drive that elbow. I know it's gonna take a lot of practice for you guys who are new to bodybuilding, new to making your lats work, but if you learn to master these principles and techniques of these five exercises that I just taught you, I promise you'll watch your back grow. Thanks for watching. Make sure you should like, share, and subscribe. And if you enjoy this, comment below and tell me which one is your favorite exercise of the five.